Hey, Candace, where have you been? Did you drop off the face of the earth? Will you ever make another YouTube video again? Well, let's sit down and talk about it. So, here I am. I haven't done anything in a very, very, very long time. <laughs> um, a few people have asked me here on YouTube, on Facebook, Instagram, you know, um, why aren't you uploading videos? Are you ever going to post anything ever again? We miss you. Um, truthfully, the answer is it's a long, longish story, and I didn't really know how to talk about it. It was really hard for me to jump back in and make some art. Um, just in regular everyday life, not even filming or recording it to put up a video, just doing art for myself was difficult and a big challenge in my life. And there were about six months at least where I didn't make any art at all. So today I'm going to draw something really simple that I love and bring you guys along and hopefully jump back into the pool of creating once more and making videos again. The main reason that I've been absent across social media and especially YouTube is that I have a hefty handful of medical and health issues that have a, a really huge impact on my life. And that's kind of the short answer that I give when people ask me questions, just, oh, I've been dealing with some health issues, I had to take a break. But that answer feels a little weird because the term health issues can literally mean a million different things and it's really vague. So I'm going to start at the beginning and try and walk you through the past few years and here we go, story time. So me and my husband got married in the fall um, five years ago. It was a beautiful September day, um, lovely, you know, we had a beautiful wedding and a beautiful first start to our marriage. We were living in a small itty bitty apartment in California at the time. I was working a part-time job. Um, I was going to school. We were generally living life being a young newlywed couple. And then that following spring, I got sick with mono. Now, if you haven't heard of mono, it's just like a really nasty version of the flu. It lasts about a month or sometimes longer. It's really no fun. You get really tired. Um, you usually have to take a break from work and school, but you do get better. It usually isn't a big deal in the long term. And I did get better. I was feeling myself. I was back to work, back to school. But then a few months later, maybe um, three to five months later, I started to have some weird days where I couldn't get out of bed. I was getting incredibly weak. I couldn't walk very far or stand for a long time even. I remember before I got sick, my husband and I used to walk to a grocery store that was a few blocks from our apartment, buy our groceries and walk back home. We used to do it all the time. But now I couldn't even make it halfway there before feeling like I just had to sit down on the sidewalk. Um, you know, I couldn't stand long enough to wash a sink full of dishes. Um, at my job, I was a receptionist and an assistant at a dentist office. Um, I had to sit down in a chair to clean the equipment. I was so weak I couldn't stand long enough to like run the x-ray developer, which takes like three minutes of your time. So um, it was really strange. I didn't know what was going on. I thought maybe it was just stress, but you know, I pushed through. I tend to be that person who just pushes through and convinces myself that everything will be fine if I can just keep going, which is not true, but I tried. Um, and then after a few months of this, I also started to have terrible stomach problems. I would be vomiting multiple times a day at school, um, at work. I would sleep most nights like on the bathroom floor. It was awful. I had so much pain. I um, These things, both the weakness and the terrible stomach problems, caused me to lose like about 25 pounds in half a year to a year, which for me is way too much. Um, at the start, I already only weighed 121, 120 pounds, 
to start with. So I ended up very badly underweight and undernourished, which made me even weaker in the long run. Um, at school, it started to get worse. Um, when these things first started, it was difficult to finish projects and assignments, which is typical for when you're sick. It's harder to push through. But now my mental energy was so sapped by this and it seemed like such an insurmountable task. I couldn't even start projects and assignments. I would just start crying with the effort um, just because thinking was hard. I took fewer and fewer classes per semester until eventually I had to drop out completely because art school is, it can be taxing. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of effort and I just couldn't I couldn't keep it up, so I had to drop out of school. I had to quit my job um, because I didn't have the energy to do that. At times, it was it was really bad. It was so bad that I would be in bed for days. Um, my husband had to carry me back and forth to the bathroom. He had to hold me up in the shower. It was truly awful, and at this point, I knew something was really wrong, and I started talking to my doctors. Um, you know, I went into the emergency room a few times and we tried to start figuring out what was going on. This was not normal. I also had other really strange symptoms. I would get these feelings of being really hot and really cold at the same time. Almost like when you have a fever when you're a kid and you're like shivering but also sweating. But um, I didn't have a fever, I just had these sensations. And you know, sometimes I would lose my eyesight randomly, and that was absolutely terrifying. It's, uh, there's nothing that can describe standing up to walk to the table and suddenly having everything go bright white and you can't see anything. Um, I would get ringing in my ears, I would lose my hearing. I would get like, um, like creeping sensations on my legs, almost like someone was like running cloth over, up and down my legs. Not like spiders, but just like, fabric was being brushed on my skin. I had terrible, awful body aches and pains. Um, what else? Oh, my blood pressure would spike up really high, you know, dangerously high levels, and then drop really low in seconds, which uh, can make you feel really terrible. It's almost indescribable the feeling that you get when that happens. Um, just that everything is really, really wrong. <laughs> dizzy and shaky and out of control. It feels like your body is going haywire and there's absolutely nothing that you can do to stop it. And it's about to shut down and you just kind of have to hold yourself together until it passes. Um, it really does feel like you're dying. Um, that sounds really dramatic, but when your vital signs are going up and down like that, uh, your body just feels so terrible. And it's such a foreign feeling that your brain automatically assumes, I'm gonna die. So th that would happen over and over again, and it was really terrifying. Um, even when the doctors were able to give me a name of, some, of an illness or diagnose what I was going through, there was never a definitive cure for my problems, and it seemed like I could never predict what was going to happen next. You know, I was obviously sick and I knew that my life was changed, but I didn't know exactly in what way. And I kept on trying to push through and have a normal life. And that just wasn't working. I, I have tried so many medications and seen so many doctors. I don't even remember the details anymore of how many doctors I've seen or how many weird things I've been diagnosed with or the reasons why. I think I've been admitted to the hospital 10 times maybe, um, like admitted, stayed stayed there, um, maybe, maybe closer to eight. And I've gone to the emergency room so many more times than that. Um, whether it's dehydration from throwing up so much or the blood pressure thing would be so scary, I would go in or I was in so much pain, I needed IV meds to help me. Anyway, it was, it's, it's been a crazy ride. So, um, Eventually, my mom came to California to help, and she was able to get me to some doctors and get them to pay attention to what I was saying. Um, I was so sick that at times I couldn't make it to doctor's appointments, and I couldn't articulate what I was feeling. So my mom is a retired nurse, and her knowledge was really helpful. But um, 
she couldn't stay with me for long. She lives in another state and she couldn't just pick up her life and come. Um, so unfortunately, because my husband works full time and I needed almost around the clock care, I had to go and live with my parents for about six months. And this was a time that I did not make a single piece of artwork for six months at least. And why is that exactly? I'm not really sure. I see art and I see creating as incredib like, incredibly healing. It's such a good thing. It's encouraging and healthy. And I imagine that I should be able to use art as a tool to heal and to get better. But that just wasn't the reality at the time. One is I couldn't, I physically couldn't hold a pencil sometimes. That's how weak and tired I was. I, I couldn't stay awake. I couldn't hold a pencil. And second, even on my good days, when I could get out of bed and do things, I had no motivation to draw or paint anything. For me, creating art is a joy, a deep joy, but it also takes a lot of mental work. I don't find that I'm a person where art just flows out of me naturally. You know, a constant flow of artwork does not, I'm not that inspired. Um, it's a process, and that process can take a lot of you. And a little side note here, which I don't want to get into too much since it can be a sensitive topic, but my emotional and physiological well-being suffered greatly as well. Being in that much pain and hopelessness can put you in a dark and deep place. You know, I have depression and I have some anxieties now that I never had to deal with before. So there is that as well. That also had an impact on my uh, break from art. I do have a list of illnesses and diseases that the doctors have diagnosed me with and I don't want to turn this into a video explaining everything in detail. It can get very confusing but in short um, the mono infection that I had at the beginning of this story uh, infected my central nervous system which caused something called dysautonomia which is a disorder of the nerves that regulate involuntary bodily functions like heart rate, blood pressure, digestive movements, all of those things that you don't consciously think of doing but your body does for you, um, kind of went haywire. This dust autonomia caused my stomach to basically stop working. So I have gastroparesis or stomach paralysis. The, the food in my stomach doesn't digest in time. Um, the mono changed my autoimmune system as well. It gave me a mass cell disorder, which means my body is kind of in a mini state of anaphylactic shock almost all the time because the cells that regulate your immune system have been corrupted by the monovirus. Um, I also have type 1 diabetes, which I had before all this happened. I was diagnosed with that as a child, but it still is a chronic illness that is difficult to manage, especially on top of all of the other illnesses that have affected my body. So all of those things are what's happening. Um, of course, there's other small things as well, but I don't want to go into all the details, like I said. Now, I feel really awkward making this video because I don't want anyone to think that I'm asking for pity or trying to make anyone feel bad for me or anything. I really just want people to understand where I was for so long and why in the future I might not post as regularly as I would like to. I am so, so grateful that I was able to get some medication and get some answers and that my life has improved at least a little. I am back home with Mr. Nifty now. We live in Colorado now, not California. And we are very happy about that, of course. And uh, when I came home, I saw that I was having more and more days where I could get out of bed and do things more often. And maybe more importantly, I was been beginning to let my heart heal a little bit. I am motivated and inspired now to work through kind of the dark thoughts and hopelessness that I feel instead of just getting lost in it and finding myself laying in bed. Um, I'm trying to accept that my life has changed completely and that I have to give up a lot of my dreams and goals that I had, but I don't have to give up everything. You know, I still can make art and make YouTube videos and do other things that I thought were impossible. I have hope that I can continue creating art and using it to heal. So of course there are bad days still. We all have dark bad days, not just people that are ill, everyone has them. But I am trying to remain more positive. So we're kind of wrapping up this story time and sketchbook session here. 
I hope that this video wasn't too weird or boring for you and that maybe you'll keep an eye out for new videos from me. I have a lot of ideas. I'm just praying for the energy to execute them and share them with you guys. So thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for watching. Take care now. Bye.